this one is already open. I didn't do that. Uh, this is a AC to DC uh, power supply. I think it's isolating power supply. Power1.com. Never heard of it. It's a 85 to 265 volts AC input, ranging from 47 to uh, 63 hertz. So here in the Netherlands we've got uh, 23, 230 volts at 50 hertz. So right on the spot. And the output is 12 volts at 0 0.84 amps. So not a whole load of power, but I think that uh, this is uh, just enough. Uh, so three wires coming out, uh, active, neutral and earth. And here is the output terminal. They also provide a connector for the output. That's quite nice. And I already know what I'm going to use this for. I uh, have uh, I have a LED uh, light bar on top of my 3D printer, and I used to control it via OctoPrint, but since my Orange Pi has literally literally melted away, it's now off, and I flip it on when I need to, but it's very annoying because I always forget it. And what I'm going to do with this thing is I'm going to wire these cables up to my light switch and then when I turn on the light this one gets power and the 12 volt LED gets power and turn on when I switch my light off the, the LED lights will also switch off uh, this is pretty neat I hope that this uh, is able to uh, to give just enough power for the uh, lights to, uh, to work so this is a nice one to keep. And now on to the next things. This shows total safety solution, security automation solution provider system integration. Safety and security. We try hard and do better. It's a color pinhole camera and ultra mini metal case. Okay. Yeah, the, the things you're about to see are all camera related. Oh, I think that this might be a uh, yeah professional CCTV. This is a, um, a camera, I guess, that's used inside... Uh, oh, there you go. That's the manual. Gasket. Be careful, never let water in this equipment. So it's indoor. Do not directly touch the CCD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wipe off the dust. Local dealer. Sure, it's color. It's got a resolution of 512 by 492. Or 512 by 582. So, yeah, this is the minimal. Um, we've got the 26 version. Specification is the same, but color is black. It's white. Not sure what's black then, but this is white. Maybe the, the element is black. Oh, it, it's brand new, man. Oh, look. It's uh, a connector. So it's a, let's see, 9 to 12 volts DC. And it's a BNC video output. Yeah, you know what um, what I'm thinking, right? Can I 
can connect this. The, the connector is very deep. Maybe if I can zoom in. Click the connector is very deep. Now I think that's a um, safety feature. So that you just can't uh, uh, rip the thing off the wall and disconnect the cable. Because this thing is held below the metal casing. I uh, bought a new uh, screwdriver set. This one, it's pretty nice because it contains a lot of uh, tweezers and frying tools and even a uh, extension, flexible extension and all kinds and sorts of bits, a magnetizer, demagnetizer. So it's really, uh, yeah, really good thing. And it's uh, rubbery, which is what I wanted, because my other screwdriver was slipping. So let's take this one apart. Um, insert the cable and take a look at my oscilloscope, what signal uh, we get from it. Ah, there you go. So take a look at the insides of it. It's the PAL version. As you might be able to see. And let's also put on the light. So there are a few chips in there. And I guess that they're all proprietary. And there's a um, e-square prom under the PAL sticker, I guess. And I guess that's where the firmware is located, so let's insert the connector through the hole and insert the connector into the motherboard. Oh, there's another connector up here, but it's covered, so I guess that's a uh, different feature set or different model or... Is there any other specific model? Maybe the mirror. There's a mirror in some of the the models. Oh well, let's just uh, put it back together. I'm not sure if I'm able to actually show the the image, but I do think I will be able to uh, show the signal because I've got those uh, BNC to BNC extenders and all that uh, that goodness. So let's find a 12 volt power plug um, polarity. The center pin is the positive. Cool. So, there we are. I'm always oh, having troubles finding the, the right power supply. So, a BNC to BNC. That's for this thing. Now I can connect it directly to my oscilloscope. So, and find a place. I um, check the polarity. It's center pin positive, so should be okay. I'm running out of sockets over here. Come on, you bastard. It's uh, the main socket for my desk is one of those uh, protective uh, things that you really need to press in order to get the cable uh, attached to it. So let's power it up. I don't expect anything to happen actually because yeah. 
there's no light or something. So let's switch to the oscilloscope and check uh, if there's any signal coming out of it. So there is a signal coming. Let's set the thing to video pal. Uh, oh, pal to auto. Let's try moving it around. Putting it down on its camera. Yeah, that's like putting it in the full light. Now, I don't think that uh, such a camera will be of any use by today's standards since the resolution is pretty poor. Um, but uh, who knows, maybe they're still used inside the uh, telephone terminals uh, at apartment blocks. Uh, maybe this is the type of camera that is actually used. I mean, they only have to uh, switch one line to the right telephone uh, rece call receiver. So I can imagine that it would be a very nice, um, very nice way for them. So let's move on. Humbug Act Ground Loop Unit. I think that this is um, also for a. Uh, where do I open this thing? I forgot. I like this. I think that this. Um, came from some kind of uh, video uh, install thing surface. So, Humbug Tecton. So, I'm not sure if I have the best solution, because I don't really have that much uh, um, PNC connectors laying around. So, I'm going to use these. These are from, uh, uh, yeah, how do you call them? In Dutch we call them Tulp, but I don't think that's the proper naming, actually. It's those video cables. So it's, it's these uh, things. So, so like this, and this one. It goes into a device. Now, I think I've got another pair of those uh, BNC to tilt. Nope, I don't. So this will be a case of uh, DIYing the thing. So I'm going to use these uh, BNC to uh, alligator clips for the other one. And grab my oscilloscope probe and attach it to that thing. So we've got the original signal on channel 2. And a comparison signal that goes through the ground loop filter. I'm really not sure what to expect here. But uh, that's always the, uh, the pleasure of discovering things. Let's turn it on. Look. The, the bottom thing is the input signal square wave and the top thing is the uh, output signal of the filter that's zero the offset it's really weird because you can see that it's yeah I'm not sure it's it's reversing it or something let's change the um, let's change to trying oh whoa what What's this, man? Wow. Change it to 550 hertz. Uh, I need to change the frequency step. Then. Triangle. 50 hertz. Oh. Yeah, 
Yeah, there you go. There you go. It's uh, 50 hertz uh, ground loop filter. And it filters 60 hertz as well. A little bit worse, but 70, 80, Yeah, it's increasing, 350, yeah, that's, that's, ooh, starting to look a little bit worse. It's funny, because my signal generator says, yeah, it's uh, 350 hertz, but my oscilloscope says it's around 700 hertz. Five hundred hertz. Yeah, it's really, it's really, it looks really weird. Soft tooth. Ooh. Damn. This is strange. And random noise. Yeah, that does. Yeah. It, it, Kind of filters it there. Mm, noise. So, cool. Let's uh, generate an FFT plot of channel one. Yeah, channel one. So, right now. And noise off. Do a 400 hertz sine wave. Cursors. Track. No. Math. Yeah, there you go. And I track them. There's an option that it follows the plot. Oh wow, you can really see the filtering happening over there. Pretty cool. Check if we can horizontal center lower the band with a little. Oh wow, pretty cool. So we now have the filtering capabilities of this ground loop filter. Pretty nice. So, yeah, that's a really cool experiment. I'm not sure if I did it right. Um, so, please let me know if you've got any comments on my uh, scientific methods used in this video. It, I just went for the the first measurement that showed any sign of life, and I. Uh, Showed it to you. That went actually very well. So it's made by Tecton uh, Homebook. I guess it's uh, from Germany. Tecton Limited. No, it's not a Homebook. It's a Humbug. It it looks quite German, but oh. so yeah. I guess this is, uh, yeah, the humbug must be installed in a video cable that has come directly from the camera, but before the cable has been connected to anything else. So that's an explanation of how you need to use it, or basically how you need to connect it. So the next one, 
CCD camera. Oh, I guess that it's. Look at that. I recognize this number. Um, oh, I didn't insert it. Yeah, there you go. See? 15CG25. 15CG25. So I guess that these are a pair. And this is. Yeah, this is the same device, but I guess that there's a filter inside here. Yeah. Oh, they uh, include different lenses. That's nice. Look, you can uh, put on different apertures, and different lenses. And yeah, it's almost the same, but it's a little different. Maybe this is the uh, other connector. That's that it's the same PCB, but now the other connector is used. Could be a possibility. Not. No. No, this is not uh, the same PCB. This is a whole uh, another PCB with those nice waver things look really shiny you can almost see myself in there and yourself actually yeah there's the camera wave to yourself no so yeah that's a completely different i'm not going to take it apart and let's check what is, I'm, I'm curious to find what's inside the cable, if it's just a cable with an LED or if it's also a filter and I'm thinking that it's some kind of filter I don't saw a, oh, I was about to say I don't saw any uh, signs of the format Paul NTSC, but there it is right there so the 6mm, 8mm, the other one didn't have a removable lens or changeable thing so let's uh, open this one up oh nice that screws that don't fully uh, oh, exit out of the thing I was about to say but then this screw just exited out of the case I like those screws you can't lose them it's really a uh, really good design practice Yeah, let's just put open. I guess that this is also some power regulator thing stuff because I already can see a few caps. Yeah, it's a power regulator board. There's a big diode MOSFET thingy on there. And a fuse. I guess that no oh, wrong way. I guess that this is a fuse. It looks quite burnt actually. So I'm not sure if I'm going to power this up. Look at all those vias, vias going through the board. Really interesting. Wrong side. There we go. Put it back together. Yeah, I guess that something did actually happen. Because there are... Burn marks right around the area. That that thing is... Look, it's, it's, it's uh, dented over here and... There's some kind of spot over here. So I'm not going to power this one up. Because I think uh, something is going to get uh, to be wrong. And to, uh, to catch fire or something. It looks like it already did. But yeah. It's, it's, it's strange because the, the, the items all look brand new. So maybe they just included this one 
since it was the same model but it's uh, the one that uh, went bad or something or they purchased a new model and they removed the good working power supply and put the, this bad one in there not sure but we've got a second user manual um, so let's put everything back in there I won't take a look at the outputs of this thing because it's basically going to be the same as the other because it's basically the same thing I was wondering how they get it back inside those boxes and I can't so let's forgot to put this user mineral back in there let's do that there you go so now we are almost done with the small packages. This is a Ernie Tech. Yeah, well, I just showed to you. There you go. It's a Lens Auto Iris DD with Panasonic plug. Panasonic is a television brand. Or it also made other things, including this camera that I'm recording the video on right now. Auto iris variable focal length type 1v3. So 1.3 volts? No, just kidding. Yeah, it's... Not sure what, how auto it is since you can tweak it. It's, it's, it's an external lens. All those systems have things that are for external usage. Let's remove the tape carefully without destroying the plastic. There you go. Now, I failed, as I usually do. Twist it, take it out of its packaging. It's oh, oh, no, this is for internal use, but it has an, a, a, a thing. Yeah, this is brand spanking new, never been touched or connected. Maybe it needs power. CCD cameras, manual focus ring, automatic iris adjustment, adjustable focal length, and manual focus ring. Yeah, that's this thing. So, this is the focus. So, are they computer controlled then? Oh, look. Cool. Wow. But I can't get a, uh, a picture. I can't look through it. So, really interesting. Maybe uh, uh, we come across a camera that is able to use this. Because there are a few other things that I did not open yet that look really special. Maybe uh, those will be able to. Uh, use this thing and until then it goes back in the box really interesting I think this is expensive stuff so and the final smaller piece is this oh this is a uh, a key fob access key fob with touch it's touch uh, I guess this is just a I'm not sure maybe it's a UART connection oh but I think it's also a card reader
Yeah. So the pinouts here, including the, it's a Mirfair card reader. Really nice. Made by Ari Tech. I don't know the, uh, the company. It's a GE Interlogic BV, so it's a Dutch company. Um, yeah, cool. So this is uh, access uh, systems, physical access, just uh, building door, including the needed parts to mount the device. Oh, and a beeper. So I can't uh, screw it open since it's all potted at the bottom. Now the bigger items. Fujitsu CCD camera. I think that this answers the question why there are so many lenses and all those things. Really neatly packaged. Fujitsu General Limited Instruction Manual CCD camera. Yeah. It's basic uh, packaging. Just a box with the camera. Yeah. So let's take it apart. Remember how it went together. This tool is used for a back focal length adjustment. Okay. Cool. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. Very cool. So I guess that these are the back focal length things. The lens. Didn't I know? see the sensor. Is my camera able to focus on it? Maybe if I put on the light. Or a little bit lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. No. Oh. You can really see the, uh, the sensor in there. So let's put this back. And take out the weird looking lens again and connect it so it's just screws in I guess yeah it does Ah, nice. And the thing connects to the back. Wow. So that's strange because it, look, it shows 24 volts AC and 12 volts DC. Okay. and a ground. So, yeah. I have no way of uh, looking at the image. Oh, there's the signature of the uh, general manager of Fujitsu. Pretty cool. September 2002. Damn, it's really old stuff this. So yeah, it, it just goes together like so. And it works. Yeah, pretty nice, pretty nice. Now, let's see. Oh, remove the plug. Put 
this back on there because we don't want to damage or destroy the thing. Let's wrap it back up in its okay. sing oh, it's plastic baggy. Oop. And the top cover why not? Cool. Let's wrap it. All right, put it back in the box and let's take a look at this camera. Let's grab a little bit of a bigger Philips head. I think that this is perfect. Let's remove the back plate. I'm very excited. I'm hoping that I don't destroy the camera by removing this back plate. Because that's not really what I mean to do. Well, it's loose. Maybe let's remove this screw. Come on, stay on there, you bastard. Oh, it's able to screw in. Then we'll screw it in. And then lens protection. There you go. And we need to remove this screw as well. Oh. There you go. I think that that might be for an external camera because it's the same connector that we saw on the other ones. Now the question is, how do we remove this back plate? Maybe we need to unscrew this one as well. Very curious at the insides of this thing. No, no, okay. I'll fully take it apart then. There you go. Wow. Yeah, that's the ribbon cable for the sensor. Oh, it's uh, Sony. Oh, that's crazy. It's Fujitsu branded, but it uses Sony chips. And another Sony chip over here. Look, two Sony chips. And a Sony image sensor. I guess that's already, yeah, that's already the image sensor. You can see the word of Sony. Oh. When you look at the right angle, over here through the window, you can see the O and the N of Sony. So basically, this is just a Sony camera. Those bastards. Ooh. Really nice cubicle uh, PCB constructions. Looks really good. I'm not going to take them apart since I do want this camera to still be able to operate. So let's uh, screw it back in. So this is basically... This is basically just a Sony camera. Only branded and assembled by Fujitsu. Those Japanese bastards. Now I can't get the screw in there. Anymore. Let's 
There you go. go. Now the weird plating at the bottom. And finally the two screws that I could take apart very easily but that was all that I could take apart at the back side. So really nice. Yeah, I guess that this is just a um, uh, another BNC uh, thing with PAL output. Um, so let's wrap this thing back in its plastic protective case. With the gels, put this back together and with the tool. Yeah, the Fuji 2 CCD camera. Oh, for the ones uh, curious, this is the type number. Now there's another one with a strange cut in the box. This is a color camera. Oh, oh this is UVC. JVC. JVC, JVC. Oh, this one is a little bit bigger. And it includes a lens. What's this? Oh no. Just a ferret bead. Some kind of uh, filter coil. Yeah, 24 volts AC, 12 volts DC. That's another big ass camera. I was about to, to say, how is the lens able to connect? Oh, there's a camera setup. I guess it's an uh, on screen display, and the plastic is even over the. Uh, wow, and I can see silicon grease on the top of that ring. That's absolutely not moving. Wow. This is really. Professional grade camera things. DXRX. Aux ground. I see sync. It even got sync. 
video sync. Let's take a look at the sensor. Hopefully without. Ooh, wow. No, it's uh, the sensor is. Yeah, it's in the middle. So I'd say the sensor is not in the middle. There you go. It looks the, about the same as the other uh, sensor. Just trying to move the ring on top of the device, but it isn't moving. Yeah, wow. Really cool. Really cool. So I guess that this uh, this uh, camera has uh, serial control, double serial control, maybe a serial output and serial input or something. Not sure. Let's put the lens protective thing back on there because it's TX. Oh no, this is a um, twisted pair. What do you call it? Twisted pairs? Yeah, twisted pair. It's sir, TX plus minus, RX plus minus. Just for data integrity protection. Cool. And it contains a battery. So for those who want to see the uh, model number. Yeah, I'm just not going to take this apart anymore because we've already seen the other camera uh, with the lens attached to it but this guy was really anxious about thieves uh, getting to steal his uh, his things so he bought a whole set of cameras apparently put it back together and put the instruction manual on top of it. And for the final camera, is this no? This is the smaller camera of the one I just opened. Yeah. Well, smaller. I'm not sure if it's smaller. Yeah, it's a little bit smaller. I guess, no, it's not smaller. I guess that this has a different feature set. Maybe a higher frame rate or, yeah, it's exactly the same contents of the package. So yeah. Oops. Guess that that is it for this video. I hope you uh, liked the cameras and the lenses I shown. Uh, I will also put a link in the description to this very nice screwdriver set, uh, so you can buy it from AliExpress. It costs 15 euros and I think 60 cents. It's really nice it's it's yeah it's really nice there's uh, one thing I'm complaining about and they included a um, a hole so you can put something in there to get some extra leverage um, I'm not sure which tool I need to use I guess this one or something no not this one 0 0.9 I guess it was yeah 0 0.9 but it's it shoots out of the hole immediately so I had, um, wanted to see a hole straight through it so you can just push the device you're inserting into the hole just all the way through and then you're sure that it uh, won't slip out so thanks for watching if you like this video um, don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment down below if you've got any questions or uh, suggestions for this uh, for the channel. 
Um, feel free to share it with your friends if they think that this will be useful. And keep an eye on my channel for the next video. See you soon. Bye. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. Make sure to leave a comment down below. You can also share this video with your friends if you think they will like it too. See you next time.